In this question, we're asked to find the empirical formula of a compound that, comp that contains C, H, and O. We'll just represent the numbers as X, Y, and Z because we've been given a 3.750 gram sample of this compound and then it says it's burned in oxygen and what is produced is CO2 plus H2O. And it tells us the mass of CO2 is 10.05 grams and we see that the mass of water is 2.470 grams and we know the original compound is 3.750 grams. So what we really need to do is figure out the moles of carbon, moles of hydrogen, moles of oxygen. If you look at the equation, all the carbon on the left goes into CO2. All the hydrogen from the compound goes into H2O. Um, so we can figure out the moles of CO2, uh, carbon from CO2 and the moles of hydrogen from water, but oxygen we'll have to figure out a different way. So the first thing we're going to do is find the mass and moles of carbon. Okay, so we're going to start with the 10.05 grams of CO2. We're going to change it to moles, which we always do, dividing by the molar mass, which is 44.01 grams of CO2. And then we're going to get um, just the moles of carbon from the moles CO2, and that's a one-to-one -one ratio. When you multiply those together, it's 0.2284 moles of carbon and that's going to be something we're going to use. The next step is we're going to find the mass and moles of hydrogen. Um, so we're going to start with water and that was 2.470 grams of water. We're going to change it to moles and its molar mass is 18.01 and then we're going to use the mole ratio which is two moles of hydrogen to one mole of water and this is going to give us the moles of hydrogen which is 0.2743 let's try that again 0.2743 moles of hydrogen. Now here's our problem. How are we going to find the mass and moles of oxygen? Well, we can't use CO2 or H2O because some of that came from the oxygen that is not part of the compound. It came from outside. So we're going to have to find the mass and moles of oxygen differently from the way we found it with uh, carbon and hydrogen. So here's what we know. We do know that 3.750 grams of this compound uh, contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So if we know the mass of carbon and we subtract it, and if we know the mass of hydrogen, which we don't yet, we're going to find that out, then we can figure out the mass of oxygen, which we can then change to moles. Well, we don't know the grams of carbon, but if we look up at the top, we do know the moles of carbon and we do know the moles of hydrogen. So what we're going to do is change these moles of carbon to grams. And we're going to do the same for hydrogen. Okay, and then once we have those, we could subtract from the, the mass of our total compound here and get oxygen. 
So for carbon, we get 2.743 grams of carbon, and for hydrogen, we get 0 0.2770 grams of hydrogen. So now we can plug those numbers in here. For our, our carbon and then our hydrogen. And when we subtract, we get 0 0.7300 grams of oxygen. Now, our next thing is to find the moles of oxygen. So we're going to start with 0 0.7300 grams of O, and we're going to convert it to moles by dividing by its molar mass. When we do that, we get 0 0.04563 moles of O. Okay, I'm going to underline that in red. So the, what I'm going to use are the numbers that I have. I mean, I'm going to circle them because I want to use only moles. Don't confuse grams and moles because now we're going to figure out our formula, which is a mole ratio, and we're going to divide through by the smallest. So I'm going to start with oxygen, 0 0.04563 moles O, and I'm going to divide by 0 0.04563 moles O, so that's 1. Now I'm going to divide carbon, 0.2284 moles C, and again, that's why I circled it, so I'd use moles instead of grams. It's awfully easy to grab the wrong number. And divide by 0 0.04563 moles O. Okay, and when you do that, it gives you a whole number of 5. And then lastly, I'm going to take the moles of hydrogen, 0.274. Make sure we transcribe our numbers correctly, 0.2743 moles of hydrogen, and we're going to divide by 0 0.04563 moles O, and that turns out to be 6. So our formula, now we can just grab these numbers, is going to be C, carbon always goes first, and then H, 6, and then O, oh, we don't need to show the 1. That is the empirical formula, and we got all that information from the amount of CO2 and H2O produced during a combustion reaction.